Hey, this is Jay with a bonus video for Unity 2D game development, and this video is a bit, kind of a continuation of the Pixel Nest tutorial uh, that I did. So if you haven't done that, this one starts at the end of that, right at the end of that. Uh, so if you haven't done that, you won't actually be able to follow along except that the script that I'm using could be used in lots of different places. Now, it's not actually a completely generic script. Um, I didn't write it uh, completely generic, so you can just plop it in somewhere. But if you're new to uh, Unity development, uh, especially for 2D stuff, then this might help you uh, in whatever game you are developing. So here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to... Uh, I didn't want to have to lay out uh, every pool pee in the level, so I thought, well, what if you... Uh, what if you made the pool peas uh, random. What if you had, when you came into the scene, you actually randomized the pool pea? And so that's what I did. So the first thing we're going to do is go into uh, the hierarchy for the scene and then inside of foreground and we're going to select that pool pea and go all the way down to the bottom, select them all, right click, choose delete, and get rid of all of them. Now we still have it, of course, in the prefabs, and that's uh, so we will be using that. But we're not going to put. I'm not going to put any of them in the scene itself. So we are going to make a script that when this scene starts up, it will automatically randomize uh, however many pool pee we want in this scene. So to do that, we need a new script, and we're going to uh, create a new C sharp script, and it's going to be called create random. Pool P. Pooply. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay. And let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to be using start, but we're not going to be using update. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Because this is only going to happen one time. It's going to happen as soon as the scene loads. And then that's it. So we do have some uh, public variables that that way they'll be able to be used or set inside of Unity. So we've got a uh, public game object. And it's going to be the enemy prefab. Now, I could have put the pool, pool pee here, uh, but this is a little bit generic at least. We need a public floating point number for the number of enemies that we want to spawn. And then we have uh, four different values here. We've got x min, x minimum equals something, and X max and then we have Y min and max and so this is going to be in case you haven't guessed it yet uh, let me flip back over to unity we're going to be able we're going to tell it where to spawn these things because we don't want to spawn one probably right here or right here uh, we want to we want to probably spawn them all from like right off the screen so that he can start flying uh, and then the pool pee come in. So we need to be able to set that. And we also, uh, are, you know, we can't see all the way necessarily up here to the top edge. So we want to pull it down a little bit. And so what I did was uh, I went in and looked at where this was, and the x position for this was 19. Um, and it's just off the screen, except it's it's really close. So I just backed it off to 20. So the closest we want one to come is uh, the the X position of 20, and the longest we want one, the farthest way we want it is uh, back here somewhere. And so like this one, this one is at 105. This one's at 85. And so back over in Mono Develop. We've got uh, x min equals uh, 19, let's say 20, 20, x max is 85, y minimum is 3.5, and y maximum uh, equals minus 4.5. All right, and so I'm setting them here i'm initializing them here in the code but they will be available in unity itself in the inspector so we can change those on the fly if we want to now that we have those inside of start we're going to uh, find the game object that is the background elements layer because we want to actually spawn these and insert them into the into a specific layer and i'll, I'll tell you why 
in a moment. So the new parent for these is going to be game object dot find one dash background elements. And that of course is this one right here and right in, inside there all we have is platforms and before we were creating the pool pee inside a foreground and I'll explain in a few minutes why that's not a good idea or why I didn't find it to be a good idea so we're getting we're, we're, we're getting that element that game object so that we can specify that as the new parent and now we're going to do a simple loop Okay, so we're going to start at zero, and while i is less than num enemies, vector three new position equals new vector three, and now we're going to get a random number between the x minimum and x maximum and y minimum and y maximum. And zero for the z because we don't use it, uh, we don't care about it. So we have a new position and now we're going to create a new game object. We're going to call it Octo for Octopus equals instantiate enemy prefab. That's the variable that we created up above. And we're going to put it at new pause, new position. And we want no rotation on it. And we actually have to cast it to a game object. So now we have a new position which we used in this instantiate call and it returned Octo which is the uh, game object, the poopy that it cloned. And so now we need to actually change the parent. So we'll do octo.transform.parent equals new parent dot transform. And that should do it. That's about, I think is all we need to do. So let's go ahead and save that, run back over to Unity. No errors down here, that's always a good thing. And now we need to attach that to, uh, put that somewhere in the hierarchy because we want it to run as soon as the scene is loaded. And so I'm going to put create random pool P as up here in the scripts object. So now in the scripts object, we've got that special effects helper script, the sound effects helper, and now we've got create random pool P. Once it's in there, we need to fill in a few things. We need to drag pool P, the pool P prefab over here. And the number of enemies we want is, let's just say we want 10. And we already have the uh, minimum and maximum where it should create those, but we can tweak those if we want. So let's go ahead and run this. And I'm going to leave, uh, leave, Leave it so you can see, see both the scene and the game. Uh, because in the game you won't be able to see the pool pee. But in the scene here you'll be able to see how far uh, across here the pool pee are spread. So here's, we go with running it. Okay, so you can see there are 10 pool pee. Okay, and we, are, we already died. Uh, but that's to be expected. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, bump up our health script on the player to 100 just to make sure that we can last long enough to to get through here and let me run this again so we're we're running like normal but you can see the pool piece spread out there and it's it's different than than uh, than the last time we ran it and if I run it again it will be different this time so in this in this case we've got a little clump up here and then a little clump back here. And if we wanted to have more than 10, let's say we wanted uh, 50 pool pee, because this is a hardcore level. Okay, so there you go. As if it's not hard enough, you can uh, put, in, put in a lot more. Go up to 100, haven't tried 100 yet. Uh, okay, so there it is, and, and there's 
there's the area that is putting it in. And the reason that I okay, let me stop this. Uh, the reason that I wanted to the reason that we put it in in this background elements layer is well let, let me let me just sh let me just show you actually. Let me copy this out. And let's go back to create random pool P. And do that. And let's uh, set it so it's not quite a zillion. Now when I run it, you'll see that the pool pee just stay where they are until we end up getting close enough to them that they appear on the screen. But what that's going to mean is you can see that all of these background elements up here are going to end up moving past the pool pee. And so we'll end up at the last with no platforms flying by, just pool pee in the sky to shoot at. And maybe that's what you want. But uh, for me, I was thinking it'd be better if there were pool pee and platforms throughout the entire thing. And by putting the pool pee that are spawned inside of background elements, we take advantage of the scrolling script. And so all of the pool pee are going to be scrolling slowly sideways until they hit the screen, until they're actually rendered. And then their move, their move script takes over and, and makes them go faster. So let me undo this and see how this works again. So now you can see these pool pee that are back here at the end. They're basically staying uh, in formation with these platforms that are here. Now, the, the, this platform is going to pass it up uh, because the bigger platforms are in the foreground or, or in the kind of in the middle ground, and so they are they are moving faster. Uh, and depending on how you want things to work, you could clone the pool pee. Uh, in the in the stop this, uh, you could you could clone it in the middle ground if you want. Um, I for playing around with it. I decided to go with background elements. Uh, throw it in there and in, in inside the little ones, and that seemed to work pretty well. So there you go. There is an easy way to uh, create random pool pee on the level as soon as you go in there, just using a little simple script.